Big every time. High town players. Yeah. We taking you back to the good old days. Yeah. Come on, let's take a trip down memory lane. Go take a ride through the good times and the pain. Gold here. Uh, it's kind of kicking back on a overcast Monday, and thought I'd do a VR to Ebomi. Uh, I never get a chance to do a lot of VRs, and got some extra time right now. I thought I'd throw one out there. Interesting uh, question um, that he posed was, "What was the first gun you ever purchased?" And I, I guess I uh, got intrigued by this question because as that song that was playing, the good old days, you know, a lot of things bring back fond memories and even your first firearm purchase can do that. So I thought I'd show you what my first firearm that I ever bought was. And it is an M1 Garand. I bought this back in 1944, right after uh, we hit the beaches. Uh, uh, don't I look old enough? Come on. Yeah, yeah I bought this. <laughs> uh, yeah. This is an actual um, almost collector's grade. 1944 M1 Grand that I've restored over the years. I'm gonna have to do an updated review on it. Um, no, I wasn't old enough. I, even though I look it, I wasn't old enough to buy it. M44. Anyway, that being said, I'm sorry about the mess. And I tell you, I've got a lot of things going on and. Here is the chaos and pandemonium of my life right now. I've got uh, all sorts of, I've got a um, portable new battery power system for upcoming uh, wireless security cameras. Redoing my, what I call the Road Warrior uh, survival kit. Uh, made it bigger, beefier, bigger battery supply, more survival gear in there. Get you by for a longer time. I'm going to update that sometime in the future. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of crap going on. Anyway, back to, uh, back to the story at hand. My first weapon actually that I ever purchased was a 22 Remington nylon 66 they called it the uh, the uh, Mohawk I believe and as fate would have it I dusted it off I still have it to this day and I get it out most important updated case for this firearm which wasn't around at the time I had it but uh, I subsequently added it to its protective player. Here it is. A nylon if you can see that nylon Remington 66. Um, it's all fiberglass or uh, nylon, I should say, not fiberglass. Um, pretty cool, pretty cool weapon. Uh, if you look closely, let's see. Let me get my 
fingerprints off of it. Um, see if you can tell me what's missing on the receiver. I don't know if it's coming in clear, but not much there, is there? The other side. Oop. Nothing there either. Figured out what's missing? Yeah, you got it. It's the, uh, back in the day, they didn't require, um, um, model numbers or uh, manufacturer stamps on the receivers. To, uh, they just, uh, uh, the ATF at that time was a lot more forgiving. But it's still pretty cool, I'll tell you. Um, it has a 14 round uh, tubular magazine that's in the butt of the rifle. You just untwist it and pull out the uh, tube and you start putting your long rifle 22s in there. The whole 14 of them. Get that loaded in. And uh, just put your back in, lock it up, and you're ready to go. Very ingenious little idea for back then. It, uh, it is empty. Uh, it, it, this brings back memories of the good old days, I'm telling you. This isn't the original scope. I actually had <coughs> another scope on there, and I'll tell you, um, back in the day when you put a scope on your rifle you feel like you could you were king shit I'm telling you the riot the scope was on there so long and it had been sitting so long that uh, this was before the era of multi-coated uh, glass lenses and nitrogen purged uh, tubes and one day I just out of curiosity I pulled it out of the uh, covered or the closet and look through the scope and you couldn't see anything because it had fouled up with dust on the inside of the lens inside the tube and there was no way to clean it out so I just put a new newer Bushnell on it. It's a nice scope. I don't even know what power it is. It's not really necessary for this. But uh, pretty cool shit, I'm telling you. I mean, um, the model or the serial number of this, which gives the date of manufacture, gives you an idea of when it was manufactured. <clears throat> I don't know if it'll show up in the camera there, but it's right there. You can see the wear on the receiver, too. It is, uh, yeah, yeah, there it is, uh, 257,000, 2,573,838, I'm sorry. Dates the rifle back to 1977. The rifles in this uh, nylon were manufactured from 1959 to 1989 when they ceased production of it. But as a young kid, when you got one of these, like I said, you just uh, you just knew that you were going to have some fun. It does bring back good good memories, and that is why I think that Eric's. Uh, question was such an important one you know it's uh, good to remember things that were fun in the past and that let them go anyway that's my uh, my first purchase Remington
Mohawk 22 nylon 66 in 1977. Y'all have a good day. Have fun. Be safe. Desert Gold out. And everything was just fine. No, we didn't have to worry about that dollar sign. Cause the Ohana had my back and no one got them behind. Playing on the railroad tracks, eating cracker jacks. And the OGs waxing up their Cadillacs. Family coming over to the house for a barbecue. Good old days, you know we had quite a few.